we're going to talk about convolutional and recurrent neural networks uh, and those networks are actually the cornerstone of deep learning so for convolutional network we're going to have an introduction to computer vision we're going to see what is computer vision and so on what are the domains of application of computer vision then we're going to talk about the convolutional layers that is convolutional layers and max pool then we're going to see the convolutional architectures, lots of different models there in the literature. And finally, we're going to see several examples dealing with CNN, for example, image classification, segmentation, and so on. And then the second part will be about recurrent networks. So we're going to have an introduction like for sequential data, why do we use recurrent networks? We're going to see we have different types of recurrent networks, like uh, relation one-to-one, -one, many to one, one to many, many to many, with different types of cell, LSTM, GRU, and so on. We're going to see that with examples for text generation and time series forecasting. And finally, we're going to see that the role of embedding layers in natural language processing tasks. So introduction to computer vision. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what is computer vision and where is it used, in which domains of application is it used. Uh, we're going to see some computer vision tasks, some big computer vision data sets, such as ImageNet. And finally, we're going to take a look at some uh, challenges still unsolved for computer vision. So the computer vision space. So first, uh, what is computer vision? So a uh, human, they use their eyes and their brain to see and to sense uh, the world around them. So basically, computer vision is the science that aims to give a similar, I mean, if not better, capability to a machine or a computer. So in that case, you have computer vision in the middle and you can see that you have so many domains of application of computer vision. You have speech recognition, image processing, uh, biology, psychology, computer science, mathematics, or so information retrieval. You have, of course, machine learning. You can use that in robotics. So, so for example, in robotics, uh, uh, it's very useful for the robots to get a sense of their environments and so on and so on and so on. So uh, just as a very brief summary, computer vision, it's still mostly with images so uh, the main domain of application of computer vision is how to extract information from let's say visual content to get a visual understanding so for example here we have some computer vision tasks we have object detection action classification image captioning so on the first picture on the top we can clearly see that this is a car so we have three cars um, on the lower image, we can see that this is a person, this is actually a kid, uh, and the kid is holding a hammer. And then on the left, we can see this is a person, the person is on the bike, and then there's the bike, and so on. So ImageNet, so ImageNet, like we saw before, it's a very big data set. So it's a large scale visual recognition challenge data set. We have one, more than 1 million images and into 1,000 classes and basically it helped deep learning make big uh, breakthrough so uh, we're going to see that in the next slide so for example you have an images and then here all what you need to do is to need the algorithm to read these images and to output the class so in that case you have scale t-shirt steel drum drumstick mud total so you see that the answer is steel drum and so on so in 2010, we didn't have deep learning. And so basically the best model was just like a very complex statistical model. So in that case, the accuracy was quite low. So here we see the error, the top five, I think, the top one or top five. So we were pretty high in 2011, we didn't have deep learning. And then the next year, deep learning kicked in. And then from here, you can see that it's improving over year and over year. So so basically the human error rate is 5.1%, so it's on the right. And we can see that since 2015 with ResNets, we can actually uh, be better than human. So in 2015, we had the model called ResNet. 2014, we had the model called KugelNet. 
2014 we have VGG, 2012 we have AlexNet, and so on. So here, uh, like I said, in 2010 we were dealing mainly with SVM. So SVM, uh, uh, they were the state of the art. And then after deep learning kicked in with AlexNet first, and then with 2014 with Google Lunet, and now it's 2015 with ResNet. So uh, now uh, we want the network to go very, very deep. So as you can see, uh, the first deep neural net, it had m maybe like around 15 layers max. And then with Google Lunet, we had much more layers. And then with ResNet, we can go up to 1000, like thousands and thousands of layers. So we can actually go very, very deep. And of course, in computer vision, now you have uh, challenges. So for example, segmentation on the top left corner, you want to see that this is a glass, there's a laptop, there's a desk, and there's a wall. Uh, you want to be able to understand in the 3D space, and that's actually very challenging, um, and so on. So for example, here you want to see that the man is waving his hand, so you want to understand that this is a hand, and so on. And also you want to understand the motion of the hand, and the top right corner, uh, you want to understand motions of the man walking in a room and also um, uh, one particular complicated challenge is it's called image retrieval you're seeing, seeing graphs and for example you want to be able to have an algorithm that says okay you have a car and the car is behind the fence but the fence is in front of uh, the grass and the grass is behind the children's so this is actually very complex so basically you want to identify that you have a children you have a car you have a fence but you also want to understand where they're uh, one to another and so on 